The first thing you're going to be doing is finding the exact center of your sweatshirt. So I have the face, uh, the front facing upward right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half and you want to make sure it's exactly folded in half. So you want to make sure your shoulder seams are lined up here, that there's no wrinkles all the way down. You could pin this if you wanted to. Um, I'm not going to, but you could. And you're going to make sure it is lined up completely straight across and that it is smooth out all the way. Now, this is your center seam right here. So you're going to take your scissors, but you want to make sure you only cut through the top because you don't want to go through both layers or you're going to cut your sweatshirt right in half. So you're going to just cut very slowly <laughs> and carefully. Again, only in the top layer. And you're going to cut straight up the center. All right, now if you open it back up and look at it, you now have created a cardigan. Here is your open center seam, and of course this is the back. The next step is going to be the blanket stitch. You're going to begin at either side, it really doesn't matter, but you're going to begin at the bottom and you're going to do a blanket stitch, which I will show you in a moment, but you're going to do the blanket stitch all the way up one side, all the way around the collar, and then all the way back down the other side. So now I will show you how to do the blanket stitch. I have my darning needle and it must have a sharp point on the end and an eye that is big enough to hold your thread. The opposite end, and you want this fairly long uh, so you don't have a lot of ends to, we to weave in when you're finished. Um, the end, I've just tied a simple knot. I'm going to begin at the bottom, and I'm going to be coming from the underside. You want to get as close to the edge here. So this is the bottom, this is the bottom waistband you want to get as close to this corner as possible to start. The blanket stitch is usually fairly good sized stitches, usually about a half an inch, but in this case we want to keep them small. So you pull it up through. You go again up through the center section here. I'm keeping these probably maybe a um, quarter inch, about a quarter inch apart. So you're going to come up through, wind back around from the back once again to the front. And when you have just about pulled it all the way through, so here it is looped, you're going to take your needle and go back down through the loop again. And you're going to pull it not tight, you just because you're going to want to be able to either get your crochet hook or your knitting needle through this loop. So if I can get this close enough, you can see right here is a small little loop. You want to leave just enough that you can get, like I said, your crochet hook. So let's do the next stitch. It's the same way. We're going to 
go just a little bit further, maybe a little bit more than a quarter of an inch, come up from the back, or the this would be the, the back part of the material, pull it up, Here's the loop that you're creating as you pull it, and you're going to put your needle back down through the loop again. And then pull it snug. So we now have two loops that we've created. You're going to continue this, like I said, all the way up the side around the collar and back down the other side. All right, we have now put the blanket stitch, as you can see here, all the way around both sides and around the neck. Now, when you do the neck, there it is a stretchier area because it is an, an elastic or a, a ribbed area. So you do want to make sure that you don't pull these stitches too tight. You want to have enough flexibility here. Otherwise, it's going to it's going to bunch up and it's not going to look right or lay down flat. So you want to make sure you allow a little bit of um, a little bit looser right along the neckline as it goes around the neck band here. So the next one we're going to we're going to uh, show the knitting and the crochet version of this. We'll begin with the knitting. So let me show you the completed one that I have first. All right, the knitted version of this is in black, so hopefully it will show up well enough. But I did my sides along here in a rib stitch. You could do them in a rib stitch. You could do it in a seed stitch. Um, you could just do it in plain garter stitch. It really doesn't matter. Um, my collar up here was also done in the rib stitch. Now the one thing you have to watch with knitting or crochet is you do want to make sure that your stitches are on the right side. So this is the outer part of my garment, so I want to make sure my stitches, you don't want the wrong side of your stitches showing here. So there is a certain direction you have to pick up your stitches, so we're going to begin with that first. Here we are back with our original um, sweatshirt that we started with where we just have the blanket stitch along the edges. And you're going to be doing the sides first, you do the collar last. Um, so you are going to start, in order to pick your stitches up correctly, you want to start with the side, with it facing up, the side that is to your left. If you were wearing this, this would be your right hand front. But looking down at it, it is going to be on the left. You're going to use a, cro for me I use a crochet hook and your knitting needle, and if you're using worsted yarn, I would recommend between a 6 to an 8. I'm using a size 7. You're going to start with your slip knot. I'm going to turn this so you can see it best. And right at the collar here, I'm going to pick up stitches. You're going to be going into each of these little loops that you have created. So you're going to start all the way up at the top, as close to the corner as you can get. You'll go in, you'll pick up your slip stitch, pull it through the first blanket stitch, and slip it onto your needles. Then you go into the next blanket stitch, pick up the yarn, pull it through, pull it through and slip it onto your needle. You're going to do this the whole way down. For every single blanket stitch you're going to go into the loop, pick it up, put it onto your needle. So we'll do a few more.
Okay, once you have picked up your stitches all the way down to the waistband, uh, you are then going to begin knitting, and you're going to knit whatever stitch you have chosen, and you're going to knit it as wide as you want it. This would be the area that would be your button band. If you want to put buttonholes in it, you could, uh, and then you would attach buttons on the other side. Um, I'm not. I'm just going to... I'm, I'm actually going to crochet my sides, and I'm going to knit the neckline. So I'm going to do a combination on my sweatshirt. But you're going to just knit this, usually usually around an inch to an inch and a half is the, the width that you're going to want. So that is for the left side. Now when you do the right side of your sweatshirt, turn this back around, you want to start at the waistband. So you're going to start at the bottom to pick up your stitches for the right hand side in order for your stitches to be the right side on the right side of the sweatshirt. So um, you want to use again the start at the bottom for the right side, the left side you start at the top. The left side you start up here at the top and work down. That way your stitches will stay going the right direction. For the collar, and when you finish your sides, whenever you get them as wide as you want, you're just going to bind the stitches off uh, the same as you would in any project um, for knitting. You're just going to bind those stitches off and weave the ends in. And when you do the collar, again, you need to pick up the stitches uh, so that they show the right direction. You are going to pick up your stitches for your collar on the right hand side beginning at the right top. And then you will go around to the other side of the collar and you'll just be going back and forth You'll be just going back and forth this way until you get the width that you want. Now I put about a two and a half inch collar on mine, uh, but you can do again any stitch or any width that you would want. So that is the knitted version. Now we're ready for the crochet version. The crochet version, you're going to stop start at the opposite. You're going to do the exact opposite that you did with the knitted version so that your stitches stay uh, with the right sides facing the right side of the sweatshirt. So with the crochet version you're going to begin at on the left hand side of your sweatshirt as it's laying on laying facing you. If you were wearing this this would be your right side. With knitting you began at the top. With crochet you're going to begin at the bottom. You don't need to pick up any stitches you're actually going to just be crocheting directly into the blanket stitch that you've created. And you can do whatever stitch you would like. Um, you could do a shell stitch. You could do single crochet and just go back and forth a few times. You could do a double crochet, which is what I did on uh, the crocheted version that I made. And so you're just going to pick up your stitches and go right through each of the blanket stitch loops that you've created. So there's an example there. You're going to do this all the way up to the neckline and then you will, uh, once you finish that side, then you will start the other side at the top. Again, it's the reverse of what you did with the knitting. Uh, you will start at the top and do the same thing and work down. When you do the collar, you will start, again, it is the exact reverse of what you did with the knitting. Uh, with the knitting, you started over on the right side and picked up your stitches. In this case, you will be starting at the left and working this direction. Around.
and you can just keep going back and forth until you get it the, the width that you want for your collar. And then you will just um, weave in your ends when you're finished. Now let me show you up close what my crocheted version looks like. Now on my crocheted version, I actually um, knitted the bands here because I put um, buttons on this particular version. So this part was knitted and the collar up here was crocheted. And I made this collar very wide. I actually made it a little wider than I would have liked. It's probably almost five inches. Um, but this is a, it's called, uh, I think it's Wool Ease. It's a homespun by, I believe it was Lion Brand. And it was so soft that I wanted to use most of the yarn up. So that's why I made this collar bigger than I normally would have. So that is a combination of crochet and knitted for this particular one. Now for the finished product. The two yarns that I used I purchased at the dollar store and these two yarns are this one here. It is a boucle, which means it's kind of a zigzaggy type of yarn. You can see it here. And this is Bernat Baby Coordinates. And I got it at the Dollar Tree, so I paid a dollar for it. And I used this one, which is Patton's Lace and Sequins. And if you look closely, you can see the sequins in them. There's not a whole lot, but just enough to give it a little sparkle. And holding them together gave me a worsted weight yarn. So here is what the finished product looks like. We have this section. I did a shell stitch, uh, which was done in crochet. And I'll hold it up closer so you can see it. It does not have buttons on it. I just wanted an open cardigan. And then the neckline, I did the seed stitch in knitting, and then I put a knitted pico edge on it. So it kind of mimics the shell pattern that was here. Um, and you can see the sequence. There you go. You can see the sequence in the collar. So that is the final product when it is completed. And I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have not subscribed to my, my channel, please do. It's Katrina's Creations Knitting Podcast, although we do do some crochet as well. Uh, so come join the fun with the rest of us and click the little subscribe button. And I'll see you on Saturday. Thanks again for tuning in.